Thank you so much for uh, the invitation to present uh, at this experimental virtual workshop, which is truly a wonderful experiment all on its own. And we are very delighted to be able to talk about some very recent work on experiments with arbitrary networks in a time de multiplexed delay system. So for years, we have tried to think about ways in which one can achieve experiments on short time scales with large networks in our laboratory. And just uh, several months ago, we realized that we could actually try to map arbitrary networks onto a delay system dynamics and create a real experiment in which we would have a time multiplexed large network possible with all the aspects of experimental problems like noise and heterogeneities and everything else, but with the possible advantage that we would actually have identical nodes nominally, which we could then make heterogeneous if we wanted to. And the work that we are going to look at today is uh, done by Joe Hart with Don Schmadl, Tom Murphy, and me at the University of Maryland and College Park. So here's our first slide, which uh, traces back the history a little bit. We try to use a fast, single optoelectronic feedback loop, which is something that we have experimentally messed around in our lab with for years. And we are trying to use that together with field programmable gate arrays, FPGAs, which are an electronic technology that has allowed us to implement time delays and feedback in this system. The nonlinearity, as you will see, comes from the optoelectronic feedback loop where the Mach Zender modulator will be the source of a nominal nonlinearity, which is a sine squared nonlinearity in this case. And the space-time interpretation of systems with time delay, which was introduced by Tito Arecchi and his collaborators, Giacomelli, Lapucci, and Neucci in 1992, will be the foundation for the interpretation and time multiplexing that we'll use to create networks with arbitrary coupling topologies, network nodes that are truly identical or could be made heterogeneous by design, and where in the middle of the experiment, the network is actually reconfigurable or adaptive as well. And we can make time delays coupled, uh, the coupling time delays flexible in this system. The network dynamics is quite fast. Uh, we are hoping to make it faster. The noise is adjustable. And we will try to, in this little talk, uh, show how cluster synchronization occurs uh, and chimera states can be studied with this system in networks that range from two nodes, which is the basic uh, element that we'll try to introduce, and up to uh, about 128 nodes with different topologies. So here is the basic feedback system that we will use. And Joe, you should take it on from here and tell people about what we are doing. Sure, thanks. Uh, so first, I'll just talk about what a single node is doing, and then we'll talk about how we can couple them and, and what happens when we do that. So uh, a single node or a single, it's a nonlinear map, so it's a discrete time system. Um, the way that it works is there's a continuous wave laser, so it's just emitting a constant intensity light. This light enters into a mock sender uh, intensity modulator, which is a wave interference device. Um, so it, it, it implements a sine squared nonlinearity. You apply a voltage to it. Uh, and the output light is proportional, is, is the input times a, the input light times the sine squared um, of the input voltage that you, that you gave it. Um, that intensity is detected by a, a photodiode turned into an electrical signal. This electrical signal is um, sampled and held uh, by an analog to digital converter and an FPGA. Um, and then the previous, the uh, uh, intensity at the previous time step is multiplied by uh, an amplification factor beta and output as an electrical signal that we now call X, the voltage applied to the modulator at the next time step. So the current, as uh, you can see from the equations down here, the current, out, um, the current input to the modulator is beta, this amplification factor, times the previous intensity that was allowed through the modulator. And so these are the simple math equations, or math equation, 
that um, models models the system. And over here, you can see uh, that we can shift around the sine squared nonlinearity by applying a DC voltage to the DC port. Uh, we call this voltage delta. And all it does is just shift to zero uh, so we can get different different kinds of nonlinearities. Sorry. Uh, so just to give you an idea of what um, the dynamics of this system looks like when it's uncoupled, uh, here are the experimental and simulated bifurcation diagrams. Um, uh, we, we fix delta at, at pi over four so that we're on the linear part of the, the nonlinearity of the sine squared nonlinearity for low values of beta. And all we want you to take away here is that we can see all different kinds of dynamics. We can have fixed point dynamics, we can have periodic dynamics, and we can have chaotic dynamics. The other thing to take away is that the simulation uh, replicates the experiment quite accurately with, of course, the um, experiment being, a little, being more noisy, so it's a little bit blurred out. Uh, so then, of course, this is a networks conference, so we need to couple them together. We need to couple uh, multiple nodes together. The first thing we'll do is, is just couple two of them together in the simplest way. The way that one might think to do this is just to build two identical systems and couple them together. Uh, this is kind of the standard equations that would model this. This has some significant drawbacks. One of them, you have to build two systems which should be as close to identical as possible, and they're still never going to actually be identical um, because the, the experimental parts are different. So what, what we've tried to do uh, differently is to couple two different nodes um, by time delay multiplexing with time delays. And so what we've done is we have one single node and we've added some time delays here. And so what happens, and we've added a multi, uh, time multiplexer here. And so what happens is on the even time steps of the full, uh, the full system, on the even time steps, we implement node one. And so you can see this equation for, we implement node zero. You can see this equation for node zero is the same as this equation for node zero. On the odd time steps, we implement node one. And this equation for node one is the same as this equation for node one. The thing that allows us to do this is this time multiplexing. Um, and the time delayed nature of, of the system. So, so there are kind of two ways to think of it. You can think of it as a time multi multiplexed way, or you can think of it in this time delayed representation that was kind of pioneered by uh, uh, Reki and, and Mayuchi and company. So let's see what happens if we couple two nodes together. Uh, again, these are the same equations without noise, and you can see without. Uh, we can also calculate the Lyapunov exponents of uh, of the stability of the variational equation to calculate the stability of this. And you can see that, the, of, of course, uh, the equations without noise agree exactly. The synchronized synchronization error goes to zero whenever the Lyapunov exponent is negative. Um, when we add noise, which will, of course, always be present in the experiment, uh, the way that we add the noise is we add um, a Gaussian uh, independent identically distributed noise um, with standard deviation A. Uh, and we add this noise to the intensity at each time step. Uh, we add it to the intensity because this is where we see the fluctuations actually occurring. X is just, remember, the voltage applied to the modulator, and so we control this quite precisely with our amplifiers in FPGA. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix beta and delta, and we're going to vary the coupling strength. And what we see is that when we add this noise with uh, standard deviation 0 0.02, we get really good agreement with the experiment. So the noise here, the simulation with the noise is in the red and the experiment is in the black dots, and you can see they agree quite well. In particular, sometimes uh, when the Lyapunov exponent and the noiseless simulation um, predict synch uh, perfect synchronization, the experiment and the noisy simulation uh, predict that they will not synchronize. Okay, so this is uh, really a way for us to understand how much noise we have in the system. Uh, next, of course, this is a networks conference. We don't want to study just two nodes. We want to make an arbitrarily, arbitrary networks and, and large networks. And so we can do the exact same thing that we've done before with the time delays and the time multiplexing. Uh, it's hard to draw now because we'll be doing many nodes. But the, the thing to take away from this slide is that it's implemented all the time delays and all the coupling are implemented in the FPGA. So the adjacency matrix resides in the FPGA and it's programmed beforehand. That's right. And we can program it beforehand. We can change it on the fly. So we can have adaptive coupling. Uh, and all of this flexibility is given to us by the FPGA. The other thing the FPGA does is it streams the data to the computer so we don't have to uh, gain additional no measurement noise by using an oscilloscope or something like that. And again, just as a reminder, that uh, this is kind of what the, the modulator uh, looks like. It, it just implements a sine squared, sine squared nonlinearity. So now that we've uh, kind of explain what the, what the experiment is, let's look at different kind of networks we can look at at using this experiment and we can try to understand. 
So one simple network is a five node globally coupled all to all network, right? Here's your adjacency matrix. Um, and what we're going to see here is chimeras. We call them chimeras because there, there will be three nodes that are synchronized and two nodes that are, are desynchronized. Um, all of them are identical and all of them are identically coupled all to all. And so what you see here is these black dotted lines, these vertical lines here represent the network time step. And uh, each of these individually colored boxes or these, these uh, dashes, these colored dashes represent uh, the, the standard time. So this is node zero at, at time one, zero, this is node one at time zero, this is node zero at time one, et cetera. And so you can see here, uh, these three blue ones are all synchronized and the red one and the black one are desynchronized throughout this whole, um, this whole time. And the, the coloring of the, of the dashes is just done as a guide to the eye. Um, they're not actually, uh, they're, they're all, all the nodes are identical. And so we can calculate the stability of, of this kind of state using methods kind of described in, in this paper where we did it for four nodes. Here we've done it for five. Uh, and what we see is we can see that the triplet doublet state, that is the case where the red and black are synchronized, is unstable for most of this coupling area, in particular the region that we're looking at here. And um, the green one, which is the chimera state where the red and black are desynchronized, but the blues are all synchronized, is stable here. Uh, and we promised you large networks, so we'd better deliver. Um, in this network, what we're going to look at is a network of 128 nodes, all of them identical. Uh, they're coupled in a ring where each node is coupled to its 52 nearest neighbors on each side with a very small coupling string. <clears throat> this, this experiment was done uh, in, one, in one of the original experimental observations uh, on chimera states um, in, in coupled map lattices in an SLM system. Here we, we replicate the experiment in this spatial light modulator. In a spatial light modulator system. With here liquid we liquid crystals. Here we replicate this experiment in our time delay uh, multiplex system. And what we see is that there's this chimera, this chimera state where uh, these oscillators are all coherent and these oscillators are incoherent. And so we can uh, plot this in the time delay space time interpretation uh, <clears throat> uh, interpretation where the node index is on the x-axis and the time is on the y-axis. So this goes from zero to 127. And uh, this is just one time step. This is plotted here. And then this time step is plotted on the second row here. And what we see is there are these regions of coherence, which also, uh, these regions of co spatial coherence, and this region of spatial coherence, and in between them are these regions of spatial incoherence, all starting from noisy random initial conditions. So here we'll conclude. So our goal is to create networks with arbitrary coupling topology. To do this, we use a single feedback loop with time multiplexing. Uh, this allows us to have arbitrary reconfigurable networks with truly identical nodes. Uh, we can change the size and the coupling topology very easily just by changing uh, the programming and the configuration of the FPGA. And we can have directed or undirected networks created by this technique as well. Uh, in the future, the things we're working on now are how do we increase the speed? Uh, right now, the network runs at about 10 kilohertz. We're hoping to run it at, on the order of 10 megahertz soon. This will allow us to do larger networks in the same amount of time as we can currently do these 100 node networks. Uh, we're also looking to reduce the noise so that we can improve our agreement with, with simulations and stability calculations. So with that, I'll, I'll conclude with our reference slide. Uh, most of this work is presented in this, this top paper here, which has just been accepted by Chaos and is currently posted on the archive. Um, and then these, these other, other works are all works that have to do with the different networks that we studied here and how do we calculate the stability of them. And the chemistry properties that give rise to clusters and chimeras.